Psychology is the scientific study of the mind and its functions, and a very important part of learning how exactly the mind functions is to perform experiments on test subjects and then record the outcomes. Many experiments go to plan and allow humans to further our knowledge of the mind, but then there are those that do not go to plan and are often kept from the public. Here we have five cases that were not only incredibly unethical, but also had disastrous effects on those involved. Let's first start with Dr. Ewan Cameron's belief that the brain could be reprogrammed by imposing new thought patterns into the mind. Dr. Cameron was certain he could cure schizophrenia by using brainwashing techniques, and in the 1950s and 60s, hundreds of people, some of which didn't even have schizophrenia, became his unwilling test subjects. Cameron's experiments varied, but his most famous is what is called psychic driving, in which many patients who checked into the Allen Memorial Institute in Montreal would be made to listen to audio tapes that would recite words said to help cure them of their illnesses. It's believed they would be strapped into beds and then these messages would be played through headphones for up to 86 days straight. And to top things off, most of the patients were given drugs to induce a coma-like state. Cameron believed that psychic driving would wipe clean the unsuspected patient's memories and implant other memories on a clean slate. The only report of this actually working was one time that Cameron made patients listen to the message, when you see a piece of paper, you want to pick it up. He then drove them to a local gymnasium where there would be a piece of paper lying in the middle of the floor. Cameron reported that many of them spontaneously walked over to pick the piece of paper up. When news of what Cameron was doing reached the CIA, they became interested as they too were looking into ways of altering one's mindset for their famously known project MKUltra. Apparently, the CIA started channeling Cameron money, but eventually concluded that Cameron's technique was a failure and cut his funding. Shortly after this, Cameron admitted that his experiment had been a 10-year trip down the wrong road, and in the late 1970s, a group of Cameron's former patients filed a lawsuit against the CIA for its support in Cameron's work. They were awarded $750,000 in an out-of-court settlement in 1988. We will never know the full extent of what went on during these tests because many documents relating to the case simply no longer exist or are classified for many years to come. And since the documents that no longer exist have suspiciously been misplaced, people believe that Cameron's experiments were much more worse than we think. Homosexual Aversion Therapy Before 1973, homosexuality was frequently categorized as a mental illness. Those thought to be gay were involuntarily committed to psychiatric facilities by their families, where they would undergo experiments in hope that it would prevent or eliminate their homosexual behavior. Now, several different psychological experiments were done on homosexuals over the years, and all would be considered awful, but aversion therapy is considered the most unethical and most documented of testing. Aversion therapy is simple. You're basically attempting to alter one's state of mind by associating a bad sensation with whatever is trying to be cured. Its use as an attempt to cure homosexuality dates back to 1935, but it became most popular in the 1950s and 60s, where hundreds of homosexuals, almost all men in Britain, the US, and many other countries were subjected to aversion therapy. Dr. Robert Card of Brigham Young University conducted shock aversion therapy by attaching electrodes to gay patients' genitals. They were then shown gay pornography, and as this was being played, the patients were injected with drugs and zapped by electric shocks. The shocks and drugs would then stop, and the homosexual imagery would be replaced by heterosexual porn, during which time the patient would not be abused. The worst part is that the drugs that were given would cause nausea and induce vomiting. This and the electric shocks was believed to make the patient's mind associate pain and discomfort with homosexuality. But rather than so-called curing them, it caused psychological damage to many of the patients, with at least one man dying from the treatment he received after falling into a coma. Another brutal study took place in 1963. A doctor reported a successful adaption from gay to bisexual by forcing a patient to stand in a nine-foot square room that had an electrical grid on the floor. When the gay patient was shown slides of naked men, a current of electricity would pass through his bare feet. Now, whether or not this successfully turned him from gay to bisexual is highly debated. Aversion therapy took place at a number of research universities right up to the late 1900s, and mental illness and suicide have all been attributed to those unfortunate victims of such an experiment. The Monster Study In the 1930s, it was believed that human stuttering was caused by genetics, but Dr. Wendell Johnson, a speech pathologist from the University of Iowa, disagreed. He thought that the labelling of children as stutterers could actually make them worse, and in some cases cause normal children to start stuttering. To try and prove this, he conducted an experiment that was led by one of his graduate students, Mary Tudor. 
It was named the monster study by some of Dr. Johnson's peers, as they were mortified he would use innocent orphan children as test subjects for his theory. 22 young orphans were recruited to participate in the six-month-long experiment. They were divided into two groups. The first were labelled normal speakers, and the second were labelled stutterers. Crucially, only half of the group labelled stutterers did actually show signs of stuttering. During the experiment, the normal speakers were given positive encouragements for their speech, but the other group labelled stutterers were made more self-conscious about their speech. Even the six in the group that did not stutter were still mocked and told to take extra care not to repeat words. Of those six normal children in the stuttering group, five began developing speech problems. Of the five children who had stuttered before therapy, three became progressively worse. In comparison, only one of the children in the group labelled normal had greater speech after the study. Realising the psychological effect of their experiment, the researchers tried to undo the damage they had done, but to no success. Those orphans labelled stutterers had to cope with the psychological and speech problems the test seemed to give them for the rest of their lives. And as crazy as it sounds, those involved were not even told about the test until it was revealed 60 years later in a newspaper. In August 2007, six of the test subjects were awarded $925,000 by the state of Iowa for their lifelong psychological and emotional scars caused by the experiment. Raised a girl, born a boy. This experiment was truly horrendous and its outcome was disastrous. It's the case of David Reimer. Born as a non-identical twin boy in 1965, David Reimer and his twin brother Brian were both healthy babies. At the age of eight months though, both of them each had a minor medical problem involving their penises. A doctor decided to treat the problem with circumcision, but unfortunately the doctor botched the circumcision on David by using an inappropriate method and accidentally burnt off virtually all of David's penis. When David's parents saw psychologist and sexologist John Money on television, they decided to visit him to explore what options there were for poor David. John saw David as a perfect candidate for his nurture and not nature study and suggested that David should have a sex change. Dr. Money believed that there was a window of opportunity for surgery, a gender gate he called it, which lasted up to the age of two. During that period, he said that if the parent chose the sex of the child and brought it up accordingly, this would determine the child's gender. His parents first disagreed but were later convinced, and shortly after, David had a rudimentary vagina constructed, was given hormonal supplements, and was to be raised as a girl from now on. His new name was Brenda. Dr. Money published Brenda's case when she was five, and it soon became a sensation. It seemed that his nurture and not nature theory was correct. But whilst Money was boasting of this supposedly incredible experiment, back in Canada, where the Rhymers were living, things were proving that his theory was far from correct. Brenda was showing strong masculine behaviours. She enjoyed running, fighting, climbing and did not enjoy playing with dolls. She struggled to connect with friends and became incredibly lonely at a young age. She also hated going to visit Dr. Money and you can see why. During the visits to him, Money would try everything in his power to convince Brenda that he was a girl. He desperately tried to persuade her to have a vagina constructed, even showing her graphic photos of a woman giving birth when Brenda was seven years old. He did this in an attempt to get her to agree to having what he called a baby hole made, even though he knew full well Brenda would never be able to give birth. He also strongly suggested that she take more hormone tablets in order to make her grow breasts when she was 12. Although some scientists have said that Dr. Money did these things in the best interest for Brenda, he and Brenda's family could see that she was severely affected, and at the age of 13, Brenda's family decided to tell him the truth. Almost immediately, Brenda turned herself back into a boy and was now David again. He had a new penis reconstructed and met a lady in his early 20s who he later married. But sadly, the story doesn't end there. David's brother Brian was mentally disturbed by what took place and later developed schizophrenia. He died, possibly of a drug overdose, which is believed to have been a suicide attempt. And David's life was not good. After selling the movie rights to his story, he lost all of the money when a businessman absconded with his fortune. His marriage also started to fall apart, and when his wife asked him for a short break, David took this badly. He returned to his parents' house for a few days before driving to a supermarket car park on the 4th of May 2004, where he shot himself in the head at age 38. David Reimer's story is incredibly sad and proves that Dr. Money's experiment was nothing more than his misguided theory that nurture could change nature. MK Ultra. I mentioned Project MK Ultra in the first case, and no psychological experiment video would be complete without it. MK Ultra was the code name given to an illegal mind control program conducted by the CIA. It was believed to have started in 1953 by the then CIA director Alan Dulles. 
The project was intended to identify and develop drugs and procedures that could be used in interrogations and tortures. Hopefully this would help him weaken and force confessions through mind control. This was done using a variety of different techniques that were practiced on willing and unwilling American citizens and soldiers. One of the experiments was hypnosis, that attempted to plant subconscious commands in order to force a subject to do something against their will. There was also the Navy-backed Subproject 54, which involved an attempt to use mechanical sound waves to erase a subject's brain in order to prepare them for programming. This was considered a perfect concussion by the CIA. The most famous of MKUltra's experiments was the use of drugs, mainly LSD, that was used in an attempt to manipulate one's mind state whilst they were being dosed with the drug. When the drugs were first used on patients, there were no medical personnel on hand to administer the drug or observe its effects, and at least two deaths has been attributed to these experiments. Despite this, the CIA continued their experimentations and soon the use of LSD spiralled out of control. Not only were CIA workers holding private LSD parties, but they were also dosing each other with drugs in the office. Frank Olson, a United States Army biochemist and biological weapons researcher, fell to his death from a 13th floor hotel window after receiving a dose of LSD without his knowledge or consent. Many well-known individuals took part in the MK Ultra testing, but the most bizarre story is that of one participant, Theodore Karczynski, who was 16 when he signed up to be a subject of a research program involving academic criticism. As well as receiving criticism, Theodore was also subjected to several weeks of interrogation for many hours a day. The goal of the experiment was to test the subject's tolerance to the stress of humiliation by people who are intellectually superior. Theodore Karczynski grew up to become the Una Bomber, a nickname he was given after engaging in a nationwide bombing campaign against people involved with modern technology. He planted and mailed numerous homemade bombs, ultimately killing a total of three people and injuring 23 others. Theodore went on to list his awards in life as eight life sentences for the lives he took and is currently held in a supermax prison in Colorado. Whether or not his experience as a test subject for MKUltra caused his murderous future will forever remain a mystery. The codename MKUltra soon turned into MKSearch, but shortly after all official accounts were supposedly ended in 1972, and not surprisingly most of the records of all these activities were destroyed in 1973. With the death, the torment, and the sheer madness of Project MK Ultra, it was not only incredibly unethical, but to think that the CIA were doing such a thing is truly terrifying. So, that's five of the most unethical psychological studies ever performed. I hope you've enjoyed, and next week's video is going to be a part two of my five extremely creepy mysteries. Thanks again, and see you next week.